Today I'm going to do an experiment to see what happens when you use a combination of the thermochromic powder. So powders that change colour when they get warm and the glow in the dark ones. I want to make something that's a little bit different with some jewellery ready for a show that's coming up in November. Now my mould here is a little bit dirty at the moment. I've been using it for different things. So what I'm going to do is give it a good clean first before I do this using these big wipes cleaning wipes. They are absolutely amazing. Look how dirty that mold is and these wipes and they smell lovely they smell of lemon these ones these wipes really do clean up your mold so quickly and i haven't had any problems with them they've not caused the molds to go dull or anything and they clean up your hands beautifully as well this is just a tip i'm trying to give out to people because i know when people get resin on themselves and on their skin and i've asked me a lot how do i clean my mold well, this is now how i'm cleaning them look how lovely and clean that is compared to how it was and if you've got anything like permanent marker on there it also gets these off so it's just a quick tip at the beginning of the video if you already know this then skip through this bit <laughs> look at that look how much nicer those two molds are now than they were a few seconds ago but now that's all nice and clean what i'm going to be doing is mixing up my resin i'm going to be using the four hour demold resin by jdiction not because i want to demold it in four hours although that is quite useful but because i want a nice thick viscosity resin because when i mix these up in these molds i want them to stay a little bit more separated than if they just blend all in and using a thick resin will really help you achieve that so one to one resin it's a great price if i've got a discount for it i'll leave that in the description below as well as the link for the resin i've got all my resin mixed up and poured in i've done two here two circles that are clear resin and i'll show you why in a minute what i'm going to do now is add my heat changing color powder to this side and then the glow in the dark on this side i'm going to put quite a bit in because i have found that if you put quite a bit in with these you get a really good result and then just mix that all in until it is fully mixed and there's no powdery bits in there at all as soon as i've mixed these i've got no clue what colors they are because i'm not going to keep them next to each other because i can't be bothered today i want it to be a surprise for me and i have found it's the glow in the dark ones where you need to put quite a bit in and it's a dry powder so it's not going to matter how much you put in it's not going to affect the cure of the resin again make sure that's all mixed in lovely there we are and now I'm going to carry on, I'm going to mix all the rest and I'll show you what sort of patterns I'm going to make and why I've got these two that are completely clear at the moment. So this side I've got my heat changing ones and this side I've got my glow in the dark and you can see the heat changing ones work because where I've gone and popped the bubbles on the top that have come up, these have already started to change colour. So I'm going to try and do the same in each shape and what I'm going to do is put some in and I'll show you what I'm going to do with those clear ones. I think you'll love it. So that was a bit of the heat changing. This is a bit of the glow in the dark. And I'm going to mix and match like this for all of them. It's not going to take me too long to fill these up. I'm never going to do them the same. I think I'm going to do them all separate colours. Because if not, I'm never going to get them all the same. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. Get rid of some of this over pour off. And then what I'm going to do with these ones, where I've already poured it, is I'm going to take some colours like this. I know you've probably seen me do this before. And this is just one of those little micro brushes. And then I'm going to drip a colour in like that. And because this is a nice thick resin, it is going to stay where I put it. Even if I do drip it in the wrong place, like there. But there we go. That's what happens when you're me trying to do equal size dots but actually it doesn't really matter okay and now for this one what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through it and go through each dot like that then in the middle what i'm going to do is put a dot of one color and a little bit of glow in the dark on top of that alternating them so we've got different color i'll probably have four different colors there finishing with that yellow and then all i'm going to do is Pull that out like that. Now it is going to move around a little bit because it's not really, really thick. If I'd have left this for perhaps a half an hour before I poured it to really thicken up, then it would stay where it is. But I didn't want that. I want it to have a little bit of blending. So that's all I'm going to do with that one. And we'll see how that comes out. For this one, all I'm going to do is some random like swiggly marks. Again, alternating between the glow in the dark and the heat changing. And these are techniques you could do 
with mica powder, with pigments, with all sorts of things. You don't have to be using this type of technique for these, but I just want to try it. Okay, and now I'm just going to go in there and do a little bit of movement like this, one way, and then a little bit of movement that way, and we'll see how that cures. The rest of these I'm going to do random. And once I've done them all, I'll leave them overnight to cure up, or for the next four or five hours to cure up, and then we can have a look at them. I'm going to pop bubbles as and when I go along as well. If I've got any of this left over, I'm going to show you. I've got a couple of moulds already, and I'm going to show you what I'll do with that that I've got left over. Well, I've poured all those, and I do have some left over. So what I'm going to do is just randomly put it into these two moulds and have a look and see how well that comes out. I'm going to put a bit in each one of these moulds, all different colours, then really not do too much with it. The brown one I want to do first, because I like this mould, it makes a lovely big pendant if you want to make a pendant for someone. And I have no idea how this is going to work out, honestly. So you're going to be seeing it at the same time as I'm going to see it. I want to say a massive thank you to all the people that got me a coffee last month. I know times are tough. Really, I could not do this without your support and my members' support. So thank you very, very much. If you'd like to buy me a coffee just to tip me for anything that I'm doing here and help support this channel, then the link for that is in the description below. All that is filling up lovely. It might just turn to a load of mud. Who knows? And a massive thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. And if you'd like to benefit from being a member, then the links for that are in the description below. And there's lots of perks and videos and support if you want to set up your own business. Or if you're looking to become a YouTuber. Or you just want to learn more about crafting. And we have quite a few experts in that group. And I also have a website as well. And there's lots of free stuff on the website that you can download. And there's information and support on there as well. And I'm going to be doing, hopefully, some interviews soon with some other resiners and with some resin supply companies and see what they've got to say. And then I'll write that up and put it on my website. So check out my website as well. And in the resource hub, there is lots and lots of different things that you can download for free and there's stuff in the shop as well now if you've got through all that without board fasting and skipping all my <laughs> information then well done and this one is nearly filled up i think it's going to turn into like a mud but we'll see once it heats up and once it gets in the light all those different colors may start to show through we will see once that's cured and I do believe I've got enough to do the same with this little square mould, which is what I will do next. And then leave them to cure, and then I'll show you what they look like when we demold them, and how I will make them up into jewellery. Because I'm going to make them up into jewellery that looks a little bit different, just to really give it, hopefully, a bit more of a boost when people are looking around craft fairs and things. Enhance that jewellery, that's what I'm trying to say. These are all cured now, and they've cured up really well. And when I came in here last night to check on them, they were glowing away to themselves as happy as can be. Quickly take these all out of the mould. I think the magic is definitely going to work once they are glowing. I'm not going to dome these either side either, because I love this mould, it gives a really great finish. But also, I don't want to put a barrier in between the actual resin and all the bits and pieces that we've put in it. Oh look, I nearly missed one. Oh, that has come out beautiful. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. That has come out really nice. And <laughs> even already, if I start to hold it for too long, it's gonna start to change colour. And the same with the square. So I've made a couple of up. All I've done is put pinch bales on them and I love these. They're so easy and they really do transform your pendants and necklaces. All you've got to do is then put a chain or cord through them. So what we need to find out now is firstly if these are going to glow in the dark and what they're going to look like glowing in the dark and heated up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here for a little while now to look at the colours of them now and then I'm just going to sit here for a couple of minutes. You know if you've got them on your body your body heat's going to change that anyway and actually warm them up and we can already start to see a difference and we can compare them. So they've had about two or three minutes. Look at that one. That has really changed colour. That's dramatic, that is. I love how that has come out. Looks like a planet. And the same with the square. 
and all these have changed colour. And now let's see what they look like if they glow in the dark. It's not a very dark day here today, but I'll do my best. So that's as dark as I can get it in here, but you can definitely see them glowing and they're all really, really glowing. So I think it's worked out ever so well. And having the two different combined powders i didn't know what was going to happen it could have all exploded but it didn't it worked really well and there's so much you can do with these types of things i have to say i am in love with that sphere i think i'll put a little cap on that chain and have that as a pendant for someone so just something a little bit more different a little bit fun and another way to be using our great stock that we have of all these sorts of pigments i hope you've enjoyed this video please boot the like button hit that subscribe button let me know in the comments what you think and be sure to check out the video that's coming up next i think you'll love this experiment it's a great one links to everything are in the description below take care enjoy your resin bye